You don't just router it straight on the edges, you route it at an angle. This is how you can make your own pit guard. So, Man, I don't know what to say. Uh, you don't need to say anything. Oh my goodness, that is gorgeous. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. So. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. As you can see now, I've got the back cavity round. The springs will hold it on the back side. This rounded down, and I'll shape this even more coming around here. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Let's Build a Guitar. Recently, Corwin, who is my apprentice, and I've been walking him through building, he wanted to build a Telecaster-style guitar, so we started building one for him. Kind of like the idea, so I've been building one for me as well. He showed me this uh, design that he was thinking that he'd like to have. My rough idea. Oh, look at this. This is his rough idea. I traced out a normal Fender Telecaster on Procreate on my iPad. Yeah. Just, I took a normal Fender pick guard, but I uh -huh. basically just cut it here. So yep. you can still see the stripes all the way through. I like that. It still works as a pick guard because it's... Which we could do, yeah. yeah. And we could make that of plastic, or we could do it of wood if you wanted to do something like that too. I'm just going to use this pick guard template, and I'll trace around this edge here, and then I'll make my line where I want it to be. And we're going to cut out a few of these little pick guards for Corwin, and probably one for myself. Still trying to decide if I'm going to put a pick guard on mine or not. We've got a couple pieces of material that we're going to do this from, so we're going to have extras, obviously, if we do this. But we do have the plastic three-ply, which you can just order online. And then, because we have these, we've got these stripes here. This, this is Wenge, and so I still have some Wenge here. This is one inch thick, and what I'll be able to do is just cut out one of these pieces on this one inch thick piece of wenge, and then I'll run it vertically through a bandsaw to cut it into thinner pieces. So we'll have uh, probably three, maybe four pit guards out of that one piece of wenge. Okay, so I'm thinking this blade is too thin. I'm gonna have to put a bigger blade on. I do have a bigger bandsaw blade. It was cutting, but then the blade must have started to bend inside the wood and push it over, and so I only got a portion of it cut out. It took me a little bit longer than I expected to. I made up two of them, and they're, they just need to get a little sand. I need to sand a little bit there around that. Yeah, you can see, but otherwise they, let's see if I get it lined up right. It's a pretty even trace around there. Like I said, right there, I need to sand these inside edges a little bit yet. I gotta decide if I wanna do that yet or not. If I want that or if I just wanna be like that. I'm not sure yet, but I know Corwin was looking at doing a pit guard, so 
at least I think we've got something for him. That's the wood. We can do black plastic as well. The other thing is, is I do have black stain that we could stain this black uh, as well. So I'll have to see what he decides that he would like. Leave a comment and let me know what do you like with or without. So now I have three of these done in this and the next step I'm going to try to do is to do the plastic three ply bind um, in the black. The one thing about that is it's you don't just router it straight on the edges you route it at an angle so that's beveled and that way you see black white black. So that means I need to put an angled bit onto my router which is interesting right now because I blew out that little router which I would normally use for routing these plastic things. Uh, so I'm going to have to use my bigger router, but I'm going to have to either try and rig it somehow so I can use it face up or I need to see if I can use an old table of mine that's made for a different router. See if I can make that one work for this router. That might be the thing I have to do. Well, I have this old craftsman table that was my dad's. As far as I remember, it didn't fit. These holes didn't fit my router, but if I can drill some new holes and make the router fit, then I'll be able to use this bit to get the angled cut, that beveled cut that I need on those pit guards. Okay, I have got a couple of little pieces, three actually, pieces cut out that will allow me to make my pit guard using this template. Now, the thing that you got to pay attention to is that there is definitely a back side and a front side. The back side is dull, the front side is shiny, it's also got a plastic coat over it that you'll tear off when you're all done working with it. So I want the shiny side up. I've got some straight edges on a couple of these and I'll be able to just line up my straight edge on here. I'm going to have to use double stick carpet tape so that as this goes down this part's going to have to be... Nope, that's wrong. <laughs> glossy side's up but also glossy side is going to be beveled so the beveled side on the router has to be down because of the router bit, the way it's going to cut. Which means that this will need to come in here like this so that when it's there that everything will be correct, okay? actually run my template through there I'm just going to use a scrap piece just to check my edge and see how much I'm taking off. So that actually looks pretty good. I could probably go just a slight bit more shallow and if it's too shallow I can always go a little bit deeper but I am going to make it a little more shallow first. Looks 
pretty decent. I'll use a little, I guess I'll get this corner here yet, but I will use a little sandpaper to even that out. Yeah, that actually looks better. Except for I just realized something as I think about it. <laughs> this edge here, that is going to have to get beveled as well, which means I need to, I need to cut this piece off here on my template. All right, so I cut my template to the shape that I need it. Now I'm just gonna run the rest of this through. All right, now I'll do two more, and then I'll have to put in my pilot holes. I gotta do a little bit of just edge sanding with some very fine sandpaper, but that should look nice. Got the black, white, black. All right. Like I said, still gonna have to have some sanding done on this to clean it up, but that's how it looks. Well, I kinda like that black, actually. I think I almost like that better. I don't know, which one do you like better? That or this? I almost think I like this better, especially since I'm gonna have a black Floyd Rose, black, black, and again, this all this scratching and stuff, that'll, won't be like that because there's a peel off piece of plastic there. For now I'm at 400 sandpaper doing these beveled edges. I will work my way up to 800 grit sandpaper on these edges because I don't need them shiny shiny, uh, but I do want them to look nice and smooth. Okay, well we are going to take the plastic off of this one so that you can see it and then I'll just have to wrap it up to keep it safe. But I have sanded them down to 800 grit sandpaper. You'll be able to see a little bit better how it's going to look. So I think that looks pretty good. I, I kind of like the black. Now I've also made up these. Um, which we could stain in black. Now this is a Wenge, which is the same as what this is, but I think there's something sharp about how that just stands out. So I'm, I might go with that. This is how you can make your own pit guards. I made five of them by scratch today. I'll show you how I did that. I did both a wood version and I did a three ply plastic and Got those all ready to go. These still have the protective coating on. I've just taken the coating off of that one. Well, I've got one last thing to do today, and that is I need to get this sent off to Advanced Plating in Portland, Tennessee. They're the ones that I've been having replate these in gold so that they will end up looking like this when they're done. Uh, but to do that, I do need to take it completely apart. And I am gonna show you how to take these bridge pieces off. There's just a little tiny locking washer that's in there that you got to make sure to get off there. All right, I hope you can see all this, but this is going to go to Mr. Smith, who is actually purchasing a guitar for me. Those other gold ones are going to be going to Mr. X. Okay, so you just need to move all of these back just like that. And you'll notice you can keep turning, but the, uh, the screws aren't going to come out until you take off this locking washer, which is right in here, and it is little. And so you just kind of work that, and I've kind of found that if I use one of these, yep, yeah, there we go. That's it. So you take that locking washer off of there. I'm sure there's a special name for that, some sort of key pin or whatever. And now look, my screws will come right out. Now what I will do is I need to send all these pieces separate. They will completely smooth these down and replate them in gold. These, the big thing with these is I want them to 
replate the heads, but I do not want the threads to be replated because otherwise they will not screw into here properly. And in fact, even after they replate these, I will have to use a tap and die set and rethread this hole. I keep it here in one of my handy dandy little boxes. It is a three millimeter 0.50, and that's what you need to rethread these when the time comes. Well, guys, I hope you've maybe learned a few things today about making these pit guards and just working with the three ply plastic and a few things here. So, hey, hang in there, fight for joy. We'll see you next time.